Hello and welcome to another episode for uh, coding homework C sharp exercises. And in this exercise, we are going to be working with random numbers and arrays. They want us to do exercise like this. They say n will be input by user. And there will be two arrays with n size. One is for positive numbers and the other one is for negative numbers. And all numbers in both arrays will be zero as default. The n numbers will be guessed by the program, which we will use random. And these guessing numbers will be between negative 100 and positive 100. If one number guessed, uh, and if this number is positive, it will be stored to the positive number array. And if it's negative, it will be in the negative numbers array. And if the guessed number is zero, then it will be guessed again. So in other words, it doesn't accept the zeros. After n numbers are guessed, your program will find position sum of numbers. The position sum of numbers are basically calculated by adding two numbers in the same position of the arrays. So we have two arrays with, uh, let's say, five indexes each. So we will calculate uh, or add the zero indexes together, the first indexes, the second indexes, and so forth. Here's an example. Let's say the input is 5 and the num uh, random numbers are negative 2, 3, 5, negative 5 and 2. So we, in our positive numbers we will add the positive numbers which is 3 and 5 over here. And in our negative we will add the negative 2, negative 5 and negative 2 again over here. And the position sum is, uh, so the indexes uh, sum basically is the 3 minus 2 is 1, 5 minus 5 is 0, and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Now we added 5 numbers and since the arrays are 0, uh, all the numbers in the array are 0 by default, that's what they want us to do, um, these numbers are not the guesses, these numbers are simply the reminder of the, uh, of the numbers in the, in the array, which is by default 0. We added 5 numbers, so that's 3, 5, and then negative 2, negative 5, and negative 2. Those are the 5 numbers we added, and the zeros are the leftover, basically. So, um, um, yeah, let's get started. The first thing, let's get some uh, arrays. I'm going to do them, uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to do them in the class level because I'm going to be using them throughout the whole program. So we will do public static integer array and I'll call it positive numbers. And we will do another one public static integer array and this will be the negative numbers. And one more uh, we need we need a public static uh, integer. This will be the number of uh, entry. So how many numbers are gonna be actually guessed or how many are gonna be added to the array. So I'll call it n. That's gonna be the user input. The user will enter how many numbers are going to be calculated. So in our main method, we will ask the user to uh, give us the input so we will ask please enter how many numbers are to be uh, calculated I guess and this is the number n so n equals and since this is an integer how many guesses on the input is string we have to convert it to integer so we will do convert dot to integer console dot read line so whatever the user enters we will convert to integer and uh, put it into our variable n so since now we have uh, the size of our uh, arrays because that's how many numbers it will uh, have to hold at most we can now initialize our arrays so our positive if uh, um, 
uh, video numbers uh, equals new integer array with the n number of indexes and negative negative numbers obviously will equal new integer with n number of indexes so now uh, all numbers in both array will be zero by default so let's uh, populate all these both these arrays with uh, zeros so uh, populate arrays with zeros and I'm gonna create another um, another function or a method and uh, it's gonna be it could be public or private it, everything's gonna be in one class it's, this is not a uh, object-oriented programming exercise this is simply for the logic uh, to create uh, to make this program work so I'm gonna put everything into the program class so I can make it pri private or public doesn't matter so it's gonna be static it has to be static otherwise I would have to initialize it it's easier to work with static in these cases populate with zeros and in it we will populate the array so we will do for for loop integer i equals zero i is less than the number of indexes which is n i plus plus and in the body of the loop we will do positive numbers with the index of i we will assign it zero so it will loop through uh, through the array and all the indexes will be zero at the end of the loop and negative numbers will be the same thing equals zero so that's uh we populated it with the uh with the zeros that's the that's the first thing so now we can call that function populate with zeros and it will populate it with zeros next uh, i'm gonna call it populate uh, with random numbers so once we have the zeros we can now assign the n numbers or, or uh, we can have the random numbers that the uh, to generate based on the n like if the user enters five we will generate five random numbers so i'm gonna create another function and i'm gonna populate it with the, the random numbers so it's gonna be uh, again private static and then again it's gonna be void called popul i'm just gonna copy paste it so i don't make any misspelling errors and uh, i'm gonna create a random equals new random so this is our our object of random now we have to store the random number in an integer so uh, integer random number uh, and I'm gonna initialize it to zero that's gonna be one of our variables and um, we need to decide uh, when the random number is generated we need to know if it's positive or negative so we know which array to send it to so I'm gonna create a boolean called uh, positive number and I'm gonna make it false by default so if the number is positive we'll send it to positive numbers if it's negative we will send it to negative numbers so basically if it's not positive it has to be negative unless it's a zero but uh, we do not accept zero if it's random we have to get another num um, if it random number generates zero we have to uh, generate another number uh, based on the exercise it says that if the guess number is zero then it will guess again okay so now we can do a for loop for integer i equals zero i is less than n and i plus plus and in it we need to uh, make sure that the number is not zero if the again if the generating number is zero we have to try again so i can create a boolean called random not zero and i'll initialize it to false and i'm gonna 
be uh, uh, generating the number again and again until it is not zero. So while not random not zero, so while it is still false, in other words, while uh, the random is zero, the random number generated is zero, we will keep looping and asking for the uh, for the new value. So if random number is is uh, zero, get another number, and in it uh, we will simply do our random number and we will generate it. So we will do our rand dot next and we're supposed to go from negative 100 to positive 100. So since the maximum value is exclusive, if I do 100, it would be only up to 99. So I have to do 101 and it's going to be up to uh, 100. And now we will do if random number not equal zero then our random not zero equals true if it's not zero then this becomes zero and we can exit the while loop and now we can we have a valid number it's either negative or positive but we know it's not a zero so now we can uh, assign it to the uh, or decide whether it's positive or negative because now we know it's not a zero we can work with it and we know it's uh, within the right range because we have the right range generated from the random uh, function so uh, we will do a positive number and i'm gonna do an if statement however i'm gonna do a tenary uh, if statement so basically if positive number will equal if the random number is greater than zero in other words if the random number is positive then a positive number equals true because it's positive obviously and if it's not else it's false and that's how you read it if random number is greater than zero then positive number equals true otherwise positive number equals false instead of if statement you can do it all in one line like this so now what we can do we can add the number to an array which I'm gonna create another function I'm gonna call call it add number to array and I will do rand I will send the random number to it the number that is going to be added to the array also I'm going to send to it as an argument the result of the if statement of the result of positive number basically is it a positive number or not because add number we will decide if it's positive number then it will add it to positive numbers array and if it's negative if it's false then it will add it to negative numbers array okay so uh, I'll do that in the next video in part two so stick around and I will see you in the next video take care